the One Academy is the heart of our company. Cryptocurrency is not an easy product. It's a very innovative product based on technology and based on very, very complex concepts. For us to be part of this financial revolution, to be part of cryptocurrency and of a community, we need to understand exactly what we do and what we talk about. And this is why we have the One Academy. The One Academy provides you with concepts, provides you with explanation on cryptocurrency and on the financial world. I would encourage everybody to join the courses, to do the certificates and to understand thoroughly how to use cryptocurrency, what cryptocurrency is and how we can change the world by using cryptocurrency. One Academy. Learn today, lead tomorrow. Greetings and good day to everyone from the Caribbean and the rest of the world. Welcome to our One Academy Zoom Call 2020. We certainly appreciate you being with us. My name is Sherry Ann Charles Patterson and I am your host today with a reminder of why we are here. Our founder, Dr. Ruja Ignatova, has said that we learn today so we can lead tomorrow. What is One Academy? One Academy is an innovative e-learning platform covering a broad range of topics, including financial areas such as financial analysis, asset management, forex, the stock exchange, cryptocurrency, and more. Our mission is to provide our students with the guidance and educational materials needed to achieve financial literacy. One Academy was developed by finance experts and academics. It is highly structured and easy to understand. You learn at your own pace and can be part of the future of gl global finance reset. Our intention is to give you a unique sense of understanding and facts which you can use to enhance your knowledge and daily lives, as well as promote our core, core product, One Academy and the benefits of our ecosystem. I encourage you to take copious notes to assist you in your quest to become certified, knowledgeable, wise business leaders and money managers. Hello everyone. And as always, we are here to promote our core product, the One Academy, where financial learning is a must and education is the new normal. And there is no better equipped nor is there a more efficient platform than the One Academy. So today, we welcome back our very efficient panel and educator, Mr. Kester Beal, as he's been giving us much needed information on the topic inflation versus deflation. Mr. Beal is a DC power engineer in the telecommunications sector with more than 30 years experience. He is also a tax consultant with more than 30 years experience. He has positioned himself in one life since 2018. Mentally liberated by One Academy's financial education. And now Mr. Beale is now a One Academy lecturer and financial liberator. I welcome you today again, Mr. Beale. It is all over to you now. Greetings and thank you ever so much, Sherry, for that those accolades. Basically, we were dealing specifically with deflation versus inflation. And my opinion, opinion that it be, is that we have been, been blindsided by inflation so much, so often and for so long, that we have not even taken a look at deflation. Everything all around the world around us, everyone is experiencing inflation. So what about deflation? The only stories we have the, about deflation, easily accessible, are those stories we had about the Great Depression. But again, that was engineered. That was done on purpose. 
what if there was a system that actually began with deflation, or as King likes to say, at least your buying power does not fall. Because, as I always like to say, repeating your true wealth is your time and your freedom. Let's go into the rabbit hole. The comparison, inflation, deflation, as we've been dealing with, this is we are in the second week. Inflation is advantageous to the lender. Deflation is advantageous to the borrower. Inflation steals your value. value. Inflation is used by central banks. Deflation is used by one life, one coin. In inflation, we know things are going to be expensive sometime in the future, so spending is a priority. The deflation management is a priority. Money managers. Inflation, there's a variable quantity of the financial instrument. Of course, fiat currency. With deflation, it's easier when there's a set quantity because in inflation, Within that scenario, we have other factors. Factors that can even throw off deflation. I refer, of course, to quantitative easing and fractional reserve banking. As Mr. Kodra said in, a, in one of our meetings before, in a deflationary scenario, you don't need loans. So therefore, the issue of usury is not a question. Inflation, there are numerous test cases. Deflation, extremely few. Making my case for being blindsided. Why are we caused to focus on inflation only? Has it been sitting there under our noses for so long? And it adds to the brilliance of Dr. Ruja. Because inflation is unnatural and introduced, un um, and introduced. deflation is a natural occurrence. So we have an ecosystem that operates more naturally. No additives, no preservatives. Raw, real ecosystem. No profiteers. One basic truth can be used as a foundation for a monkey of lies. And if we dig down deep enough in the mountain of lies and bring out that truth to set it on top of the mountain of lies, the entire mountain of lies will crumble under the weight of that one truth. And there is nothing more devastating to the structure of lies than the revelation of the truth upon which the structure of lies was built. Because the shock waves of the revelation of the truth reverberate for generations to follow, awakening even those people who had no desire 
to be awakened to the truth. Then I'm on a divorce. This is taken from inside the book called Behold a Pale Horse by the now deceased William Cooper. This is our quest in one life. To wake up even those people who had no desire to be awakened to the truth. Because it would be remiss of us to simply have it and hold it. Good versus bad deflation, lessons from the gold standard era. It's actually a paper by a number of authors. This is Michael de Bordeaux, an American economist, with an H index of 81. What is an H index? Scholarly writer, writers are given an H index based on how many papers they turn out and the amount of citations given to those papers. A good H index is 20. Two, zero, 20. Mr. Bordeaux is at 81. So this is a real person, and those are some of the books he wrote. Angela Reddish. She's a Canadian economic, economist and a professor at the Vancouver School of Economics. H index of 24. As I said, 20 is a good H index. And John Landon Lane. He's a professor of economics at Rutgers University, New Brunswick. Primary research interests include econometrics, macroeconomics, and economic history. Econometrics, time series, forecasting, and Bayesian methods. And these people put together a paper. This paper speaks about, as I said before, good versus bad deflation, lessons from the gold standard era. So these people put together said people. Bear with me as I pull it up. And share it with you. And this people Starts by indicating deflation has had a bad rap, largely based on the experience of the 1930s when deflation was synonymous with depression.
Think about it. You are part of the one ecosystem. Existing in a deflationary economy. Or better said, a naturally deflating economy. Without bells, without whistles, without additions, without removals. It's an extremely technical paper. But the fact is, deflation has had a bad rap. I prefer to say that deflation is given a bad rap based on the ecosystem it was forced to exist in. Because your true value is your time and your freedom. Welcome to the rabbit hole. Just as a piece of information, the person with the highest ever age index is, of course, Sigmund Freud with an age index of 246. Just so you know, everyone cites Sigmund Freud, and Sigmund Freud has put out quite a lot. Now I'd like to show you some people who I am sure wished that deflation existed. Because for the first time, in almost 46 years, the US is experiencing high prices, price inflation once again. And we know how people in that country are good at, prot at protesting. The bottom line being they are now experiencing... Just when they can afford it least, Americans are suffering sticker shock at the grocery store. The meat the deli, um, the ham, the cheese. I don't think I've shared my screen. Well, we didn't see anything coming through. No, we're not seeing okay. anything. Coming up now. Just when they can afford it least, Americans are suffering sticker shock at the grocery store. The meat, the deli, um, the ham, the cheese, even the bread is costing more now. According to the U.S. Labor Department, food prices rose 2.6% in April, the biggest monthly jump in 46 years. Prices for staples like meat and eggs surged even more. But, um, I'm a single parent. I have a mortgage. I have a car note. So you kind of think, like, what's priority right now? Do I pay my mortgage or do I go grocery shopping? With tens of millions of Americans newly unemployed, more than at any time since the Great Depression, soaring prices mean long lines at food banks and more Americans than ever questioning where their next meal will come from. It's appalling because we already are worried that people are stuck in their house and what's going to happen. And now we know that a lot of people who are stuck in their house, they're hungry. 
One in five families is food insecure, she says. The number is two in five for families with children under 12 and higher for African American and Hispanic families. As meat plant workers have grown ill and died from the global pandemic, dozens of plants shut down. I work around over 1,700 people. That ain't safe at all. President Trump ordered the plants to reopen with new precautions, and he said he plans to change visa rules so that plants can keep foreign workers in the U.S. longer to replace those who are sick or under quarantine. But panic buying and a supply chain slowed by social distancing are driving prices higher. Chicago's old meatpacking district is filled with restaurants now. The old slaughterhouses and meatpacking plants have moved to rural areas. But the meat is still traded on the Chicago Commodities Exchange a few blocks away, where prices have been steadily rising. With no cure and no vaccine in sight, the rising arc of food prices continues to mimic the growth of the virus. So there you have it. We are, or we have to be some that we are in this ecosystem. Take advantage of your natural ecosystem. No unnecessary bells and whistles. We have access to food. We still have access to luxuries if we so desire. While there are people who don't know where their next meal is coming from. That Chicago, USA, being one of the country, being the country that does not have access to the one ecosystem. We have to remember our most charismatic Shoba Gopichan Singh for the service she provides. There are others who provide services even in terms of supplying food, clean tech, when we have our various deal shaker events. In simple things, coffee from our own Muriel Lezama. We have so many people that give us so much value in this ecosystem that we tend to forget. We are existing in two economies. We share a mark of the iron power team. In this COVID pandemic, pandemic, tell me, which one of those ecosystems give you value for your money? At this time, I'd like to call in, of course, part of that IM team, Ivan Mark. Ivan, what are your views? All right, good morning. Um, you're touching a very, very tricky and literally on, on spoken about topic, as you say, that they try not to go down that road of deflation because um, when you really look at it at its core value, it is really something that <clears throat> people need to know and it really benefits us in, in a certain way. Now you showing that video literally speaks to what is, what is taking place worldwide and I mean just not America but as the person said that you know as people are home people are home hungry and uh, these are things that we don't see on a normal media we don't see that someone will have to really dig deep into other other methods to get the information that is true and the ones that really affect us the, the information that really affect us is kept away from us because again, we are at the mercy of certain authorities. We are at the mercy of the banking cartel. 
And we have to say bank and cartel because they are the ones that put down the law on countries. It's not the governments, really. And people must understand that. Um, again, I always go back to the factor of critically thinking. A lot of times we give up our free thinking faculties just to be herded um, into a particular direction by who we think are the ones seeking our interests. No one, and I repeat this without fear of contradiction, no one seeks your interests but you. And if you don't have the correct information, you will think you are seeking your interests, not understanding that your mind is playing tricks on you and you are really benefiting the other, the other um, people who you can't see, um, who is not in your normal line of view or anything like that. So from the time the US government decided to pump $6 trillion into the economy with quantitative easing, which again, um, if you go back to some of the sessions that we spoke about, this is the end of a 90 year run. And that the, the economist that was featured when we had um, a certain presentation with Daniela Booth from Quill, in, Quill Intelligence. Um, what he is saying, of course, and I always want to reiterate that because he's so on the button that after the 90 year period, um, the, 30, the last 30 years, the whole system goes bankrupt when he backed. He actually did his back testing. And it is so true that's where we reach right now, 1929 to 2019. Um, the system is, is failing once more. So our whole thing is, listen, <clears throat> we know that this is happening. Um, we are bringing certain information to you. We are bringing this information to you because we want you to really harness what we are, what we are saying and do something totally different. Um, when you understand that that person said in the video um, that you just played, Kester, the, the lady said that, you know, she has to more or less toss up between paying the mortgage and feeding her family. And that is where it always ends up. You have to sacrifice one for the other. And if you look at all the people who, have, who are wealthy, they are not sacrificing anything. They are waiting, they are standing by. So when you, guess what will happen? When, you, when that lady sacrificed her house on a mortgage, who is waiting in the shadows to take it at rock bottom price, at fire sale price? Um, you know, because if the bank will just take anything at this point in time, they would just show it on the books as a debt cancel. And of course, the interjection from the government will go to the banks. So at the end of the day, this is where it will come down to. And we are now starting to see the tip of the tip of the iceberg. We haven't seen uh, the whole story of this as yet, because they're expecting a, a rally, of, of course, until 2021. So are the families prepared for the next, where we're in, we're in May, for the next seven months to operate at substandard living conditions? Are we prepared? Because regardless of who start back working, you're working at probably 25% less of your normal income to begin with. You have already exhausted a lot of your savings that's trying to survive up until now. And that money is not being replaced anytime soon. And then you have a rise in prices. So you have everything. And of course, food will be one of your biggest, um, you know, bill at the end of the month. And not to mention other utilities may also go, go up in, uh, in pricing. So you see the condition. So my, my advice, to everyone here, and it is coming directly from the One Academy, the manuals and learning for profit here, is literally try as much as possible to keep out of any debted situation right now. Try as much as possible of utilizing your savings that you, that you literally have. Try and take a portion of that and do uh, investment that will bring income to you at this point in time. Because if you continue to hold on to that savings, that savings will go continue to go down and go down in value. Even if 
you don't touch it. Even if you just leave it and you don't touch it because you're not going to get any interest from the banks or any other institution to surpass the inflation rate. Um, and if you just leave it there, so you're losing value already. If you don't do something extraordinary, then you would never, ever um, be in a better position at the end. You will just continue to go down and down. So you need to get that advice. You need to get that financial advice at this critical point in time. You need to invest in things that are needed and things that will bring some sort of income for you to mitigate the income that you are losing. And, and terribly, you need to stay out of debt. Credit card debt, if you have any at this point in time, you may want to look at that, consolidate it. If you have any consumer debt, you may also want to look at that um, at this point in time because what you're looking at is survival at this point, and you're also looking at trying to, um, you know, capitalize from the opportunity that really is in this environment. And there are opportunities, but many times you don't see it unless you have a mastermind group that you can get together with and brainstorm and come up with a lot of ideas. I, I, I would advise anyone at this time to get involved in a mastermind group. Get, it, get some, um, some expertise in your, in your hand. Get some information. Start to do a lot of research. But do not sit back and wait for this thing to get better. It will not get better. So do not sit and think, hey, I'll just wait until this thing blow over. No, it wouldn't. If you don't move now, you'll be in deep, deep trouble. All right, so guess thank you for that. Um, I don't know if anybody else has anything to say. Muriel, I see. We have Mr. Ford on. Uh, Mr. Ford, could you just chime in, please, on what was discussed? Good afternoon, fellow one academites. Yeah, good afternoon. Can you loud and clear? Loud and clear. I have a little background. I'm on, at a construction site. But look again from what discussed, we need to diversify to save something for the future or something that will grow because even what was highlighted even in our country where prior to covid the bank the sorry the finance the supermarket stating that they will be increasing prices way before the covid situation which means they anticipated with our influx of new polymer 100 that they decide they need to raise their prices. And I've seen it myself over occasionally buying in the grocery. Things are going up $2, $3 from one week to the other consecutive weeks. Yes. So keeping a track of it, that means we have to do something that will preserve your wealth or, or increase in value with the, the deflation of values of, of commodities going around us. Yeah. Forward. And, and you know one thing, Ford, um, I mean, we are involved in cryptocurrencies, um, but if you notice that with the, the, stimulus, the stimulus package, what happened is the currencies started to fall and so too did a lot of the cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin and all of these things also took a beating. Um, somehow ours during the pandemic went up in value, the community in, enjoyed an increase in purchasing power. What do you equate that to? And would you advise people to get some of the cryptocurrency that we have to sort of mitigate against their loss in buying power? Yes, I, strong, I strongly agree because actually a, a fellow colleague of mine received some funds from a relative in London and being among them, not aware of the present value of the exchange for pounds to TT, their value exchange was less than less than eight, seven point something. Normally, I know that pounds always so propped up higher, 10, 11, 10 point something. I was shocked to say the pounds exchange was so a little bit within this week for my colleague receiving a few hundred pounds and it a slight pretense 
I was shocked to say, wow, that means even the pounds being propped up has devalued on the exchange. Yep, yes. The, the, the currency is taking a beating. Uh, and that is because um, a lot of the countries, a lot of people are losing confidence in certain currencies, Their especially the US systems. dollar. Yeah, especially the US dollar. So we have a uh, unique opportunity to capitalize on it. And um, we need to take it. So thank you so much, Gregory. And um, I continue, continue yes? to share the information as best as I can to those that I know and those that I care. As I always say, even as an educator, I share because I care and because I have informed knowledge other than the traditional learning. I think through the One Academy and exposure and understanding what certain ec economics is, we have the true economic system that gives value to the consumers or to the members, which is still 90% of the population of our community. If the community benefits, overall everyone will benefit as we grow. All right, thank you so much. I have three points from a video that you did last week. Mm -hmm. You played uh, Robert Kiyosaki first. And these three points, I think, have to hold true. Right now, the harder you work for money, the poorer you will become. And this was a comment made by Robert Kiyosaki during the COVID lockdown. The harder you work, you need a brainstorming team. That's right. It is inevitable. And you need to ask, yes, you must have a mastermind team. You need also to ask yourself, if you aren't consistently making money, what don't I know? Yeah, because That's I think at this point, I think with this point, he said that he is becoming richer in this situation. Correct. He said, in one of his videos, he said in one day he made 750,000 US <clears throat> in one day. Hmm. Um, because the stimulus package favors his type of business, Correct. you know, so. ESBI, what quadrant are you on? Yes. Final point, you have a personal responsibility to seek the answer to the above question. And that is where a lot of people fail. They do not take responsibility for their own well-being many times that is where the failure is um, and it's because of two things yes it's because that since you were small you were basically asked to conform to a lot of things and the second thing is is that you do not it, we, we become soft and lazy so we do not want to seek because what it will take for us to really thrive is too difficult for us so we'll go with the type Hmm. You'll go with the tide. And 5% um, of the people, as usual, will come out better in this situation. 95, it makes no difference. Analysis. It, make, it makes no difference. So, so, but we have to keep on talking about this um, because there's still a lot of 5%ers outside there that we have to touch. Hmm. Correct. So we. We are really looking for the five percenters. That is what we're looking for. We have to recognize that. You know, I'll just ask Miri, and then we'll take the merchant of the day. If you're through um, Kesto, or if you have anything else. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. You know, it was I, 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 I had to, I had to uh, deal with some matters of state, but um, you know, a lot, everything that you all have said really points to we focus on our, what we are doing, on our One Academy, on our teaching, on our absorbing, because he is correct in this, in this period, we would be earning less from many perspectives, because remember, you said it, we are spending more. When you're home, you eat more, you use more utilities, and these things are, are increasing on your um, pocket, which is not expanding. If, of, however, 
you have, like us, the ability to utilize your cryptocurrency for a number of goods and services. That, that is our stimulus package. You know, that's our, that stimulates us so that we have so much more to see in this, but we need to focus on the merchants of the day. But this was an excellent discourse. And people need to, need to really have their eyes open, look at what the One Academy have, because, you know, as I, in the back of me, you know. You need to open your camera. Learn today. Or is that open? You're not, not seeing me? me. Nah. Yeah. I thought it was open, but the point is, though, you learn today and you lead tomorrow. And we are learning so that when, because these things are cyclical, they will happen again. And we have to continually be prepared. That's me. Yep. Um, Thank you so much. So we have the One Academy here. You say you have it in your background. We learn today so we could be tomorrow. <laughs> so that's what we do. All right, so it's back yep. over to you. Um, Ms. Sherry, back over to you. Thank you so much, guys. All right. Thank you all very much. That is so true, Ms. Muriel, that we learned today so we can lead tomorrow. I must say bravo to Mr. Kester Beal, who has given us a lot of information and did extensive research into this topic that we've been discussing for the past two weeks, inflation versus deflation. Thank you to our panel that was there alongside with Mr. Beale and expounding even deeper and much more on the topic. You all certainly gave us information that would help us to become better money managers. And now it's time to see the work of our beautiful ecosystem. So today it is time now for the merchant of the tea. And our merchant today is Mr. Raul Carrington. Mr. Carrington, who is a father of two, wears a number of hats. He is certified in security, administration, and management. He is into health and safety. He has been a sergeant in the police force for the past 26 years and an entrepreneur for 11 years. Welcome, Mr. Carrington, to you. Yes, we are. Good afternoon. Good day to you, Get sir. my camera on. Right. Okay, I want to say good afternoon and thank you for having me on to present the, the deal of the day. Now, um, I just want to make I just want to make one correction to, to, to my bio there. Um, yes, I've been a police officer for the past um, twenty six years, but I've just only been a sergeant for the last four years. So you know, that's, that's the correction I want to make there. But um, being an entrepreneur, I have dabbled. And, you know, in a, a lot of business out there, network marketing, and had some level of success. But I want to say, um, when I got introduced to One Life in 2016, um, that was, it was much different to the regular type of business that I did. First of all, was about cryptocurrency and that was um, pretty new to me until I got an understanding of it. And today we are seeing the benefits of people who have elevated, you know, to, to having an account where they have cryptocurrency more so the ones. And not only that, you know, we, the, the One Life has designed their own ecosystem where merchants and entrepreneurs can um, have their products marketed, you know, and the wider community can see that. One of the products that I have, um, I am a, a health enthusiast. 
So um, I was introduced to alkaline water about 20, about 20 years ago. And I decided that I would invest some money and get my own machine for myself. And then I realized that I, could, I can do business with that. So what I actually do, I actually uh, manufacture alkaline water. The, the thing about alkaline water and the benefits of it, 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 it forms the part of a, a health protocol, all right? So it doesn't, it, it, it by itself will not cure you of all your illnesses and all of that. But once you follow a health protocol, what the alkaline water does, it enhance that and brings you up to optimum health. So what I have here, what you're seeing, if you all can see, is a five liter or a gallon bottle of the alkaline water. This, I, I, I market this, this, you can get four of these bottles, four of these bottles for $100 TT dollars or 0 0.301. Ones. I think that that is exceptional for anyone who want to follow a healthy lifestyle. Not only for that, um, I have a number of customers who they absolutely don't use their tap on water. And they use, they take this water for their cooking and everything. And, and they have enjoyed and have seen the tremendous benefits that they have gotten from using this water. Um, the, the, the water is processed through a system called electrolysis that gives you this alkaline water. It, and the deal shaker, if, what I can see about the, the, the deal shaker platform is that it gives the merchants an opportunity to advertise their products over the, the whole entire network. So instead of, and, and that is for free. And I think that is a tremendous benefit. You're talking about almost 3 million people seeing your product for free. And I think that is a steal of a deal. So anyone out there who is listening or has tuned into our program today, I think now is the opportunity to take advantage of this. Now that we see what is happening globally, where um, food prices are going up. I mean, yes, are climbing. And the value of the money or the dollar in your hand is dropping. And, you know, um, I, have to, I have to say, you know, um, Ivan mentioned it, and Kester also. You know, what is significant about all of that is that while the money that you will use are dropping and losing value, our wine, our ones are increasing in value. So it, it means we have a greater spending value for our ones. And this is a, a tremendous opportunity that we, 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 we should take advantage of. So anyone who out there is looking on today, I would, I, I would encourage you to come on board ask questions and let us show you how you can benefit as a merchant from the deal shaker platform you, you, you have a wider um, you have a wider scope in, in, in which to, to reach the people out there through the deal shaker platform and the coins that you get from marketing your product constantly increases in value so it's a win-win situation for you thank you Thank you, Roel. Um, sherri back over to you. Sorry about that. I had a few problems there. Mr. Carrington, that's a brilliant, brilliant idea that you would buy a machine and begin doing your own um, alkaline water. And, and of course, you know what you're doing because you have been in health and safety for a, a long time now. You know, and the price is exceptional. Really, really exceptional. So, could you tell us the name of your store on the shaker so that we can access this wonderful deal that you have? It's it's under my name, Roel Carrington. 
Okay. Yes. Uh, so just before we go, as an entrepreneur, could you tell our listeners and our viewers what value has, you know, Deal Shaker brought to you? And even for just a simple person who may have a one-time deal to sell on the Deal Shaker. What I, what I would tell someone who is new is that they have nothing to lose, all to gain. That's the thing about the deal shaker. It, it puts you in an advantageous position because first of all, if you have to market your product outside there, that is going to take, you have to find the money to do that. While on the deal shaker, once you come on, your, your product goes out there to the whole One Life community. So that is free advertising, all right? And the coins that you get, if you're doing half-half, half fiat and half coins, your, your coins, the value of your coins, I am guaranteeing you what you have today in your pocket, a few months down the road, that value is going to go up. So it's a win-win situation. You cannot lose at all. So I think this is an opportunity that you should not ignore, but come on board one time. Ask some questions and let us show us how we can get you in as soon as possible. Thank you so much, Mr. Carrington. We really appreciate you coming you know, on the program today to show us your wonderful deals. And I must add to that that you know, each person that puts a deal whether it be a product or a service on the deal shaker, it is seen in over 194 countries. Exactly, yes. So Mr. Carrington, I wish you a blessed day today as you continue doing what you do best. Okay, thank you. You're Have welcome, you. sir. You're welcome, sir. All right, so we've come to the end of our program today and I want to invite you back tomorrow as tomorrow will be a special day. Every Friday is Freedom Friday. So we have more merchants being on tomorrow expressing to us freedom mentally, which is most important. So when you rise tomorrow, please remember to first give God thanks for life. For without him, nothing is possible. Join us again tomorrow, 12 noon. And if our ecosystem is worth having, it is worth sharing. So bring someone along with you tomorrow, a friend, a loved one. Have a blessed day. Blessings to all of you and goodbye.